Good morning. Today we are going to walk through my solutions to the first mechanics free response question of the AP Physics C 1998 released exam. AP is a registered trademark of the College Board which was not involved in the production of and does not endorse this product. Here we go. Hey guys. Hey Bob. Uh, hi Bob. Flippin' Physics. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, but otherwise I'm just going to keep on going because we have a lot to get through. We have two gliders. We know the mass of glider A is 0.90 kilograms. The mass of glider B is 0.60 kilograms. They're sliding on something that's completely frictionless. We know the initial velocity of A is to the right. We know the initial velocity of B is zero because it's at rest. There is a spring attached to block A, which has a mass of zero. We know that we, have, we can see that there are two seconds of total time illustrated and that each of the tick marks is 0 0.10 seconds. Now it's important to realize that um, this is the total time represented, but it's not the total time for the collision. So the collision actually lasts for less than the two seconds. And the first question is, uh, determine the average speed of glider A uh, during the 0 0.10 to 0 0.30 seconds, part AI. Part A asks for the average speed. The equation for average speed is just the distance over time. Part AI is the speed specifically from 0 0.1 seconds to 0 0.30 seconds. And so we could just read that off of the ruler here. We know that our distance at 0 0.30 seconds is 0 0.30 and our distance at 0 0.10 seconds is 0 0.10. Therefore on the top, the distance is gonna be 0 0.30 minus 0 0.10. On the bottom, our time is going to be the 0 0.30 minus the 0 0.10. And our average speed for the first part is one meter per second. So for parts A double I and A triple I, we're just looking for more average speed. A double I is the average speed from 0 0.90 to 1.10 seconds. And so we just figure out the position at 1.10 seconds is 0.99 meters, and the position at 0 0.90 seconds is 0 0.87 meters. So on the top, we end up with 0.99 minus 0 0.87, on the bottom 1.10 minus 0 0.90, and that gives us an average speed for of 0 0.60 meters per second, A double I. A triple I is pretty much the same thing, you just read it off the ruler again, just from 1.70 to 1.90 seconds. So you end up with 1.18 minus 1.14 divided by 1.90 minus 1.70. 0 0.20 meters per second is the average speed, A triple I. For part B, they've asked us to draw a sketch of the velocity of cart A as a function of time. Uh, and basically, we've already figured out the average speed. We're just now going to graph what that's going to look like as a function of time. So we need to look at it in three different intervals. If you look at the uh, ruler, you can see from zero to 0 0.70 seconds, the distance traveled um, during each 0 0.1 seconds is 0 0.10 meters. In other words, for part one, that velocity is constant, and we already figured out its value, it's one meter per second. So from approximately zero to 0 0.70 seconds, we're gonna draw a constant velocity of one meter per second. So there's our constant velocity from zero to 0 0.70 seconds of one meter per second. Now part two, which lasts from about 0 0.70 to 1.30 seconds. During part two, you can see that the distance traveled during each 0 0.10 seconds is actually getting smaller each time. This means that in part two, the cart is slowing down and has a negative acceleration. I'm not gonna draw it just yet, but we'll draw it part two in just a minute. We're actually look at part three before we draw part two. Part three lasts from about 1.30 to 2.00 seconds. And during that time, the distance traveled during each 0.10 seconds is the same. Therefore, again, it's moving at a constant velocity. 
we actually already figured out that constant velocity. It is 0 0.20 meters per second. So now we can draw part three, another horizontal line at a constant velocity of 0 0.20 seconds. So in part three, we draw a horizontal line for our constant velocity of 0 0.20 meters per second, going from about 1.30 to 2.00 seconds. And now we can come back to part two. Part two has a negative acceleration, and it's decreasing in velocity from 1.0 to 0 0.20 meters per second. So we're gonna draw that like this. So you can see we end up with a line which has a negative slope because it's a negative acceleration and it connects the two lines we had before. And we do have little curves here because this is a real object and it does need time to change. Part CI, they're asking for the speed of cart B right after the collision. This is a collision where all forces are internal. Therefore, Bobby, what is conserved during all collisions and explosions? Uh, momentum, that's conservation of momentum. That's right, this is conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum says that the sum of the initial momentums of the system is equal to the sum of the final momentums of the system. Therefore, we have carts A and B. Therefore, we have the initial momentum of A initial plus the initial momentum of B initial. And finally, we have the uh, final momentum of A plus the final momentum of B. Now we can substitute in the equation for momentum. The equation for momentum being mass times velocity. Therefore, we have the mass of each times the velocity of each. For example, mass of A times the velocity of A initial plus the mass of B times the velocity of B initial, so on and so forth. We can now plug in our numbers. The mass of A is 0.9 kilograms. We figured out that the velocity of A initial is one. We know that the velocity of B initial is equal to zero, so this whole piece goes to zero. The mass of A is 0.9 times the velocity of A final, which we again figured out to be 0.2 meters per second. The mass of B is 0.6, and we're solving for the velocity of B final. We end up with 0.9 is equal to 0.18 plus 0.6 times the velocity of B final. Therefore, the velocity of B final is just 0.9 minus 0.18 divided by 0.6, or 1.2 meters per second. Part C double I, they are asking us now to draw the velocity as a function of time of glider B. Again, this is very similar to what we did in part B. There are three parts. Uh, part one has a constant velocity of zero. So from zero to 0.7 seconds, we're gonna draw a horizontal line with a velocity of zero. Part two is the collision, so cart B increases its velocity from zero to its final velocity. And in part three, it's the cart has a constant velocity. We figured out, we just figured out that constant velocity to be 1.2 meters per second. So now we can draw from 1.30 to 2.00 our constant velocity of 1.2 meters per second. And again, we can connect the two, part one and part three, with a positive slope and curves to show a positive acceleration. And that is our graph for part C double I, the velocity as a function of time for cart B from 0 to 2.00 seconds. Part DI is the collision elastic. They give us a graph of the kinetic energy as a function of time during the whole event. And you can see during the collision that that kinetic energy decreases, the kinetic energy of the system decreases and then comes back up to where it started. And we should remember that during all elastic collisions where the two objects run into one another and bounce off of one another, that kinetic energy is conserved. And you can see in this graph that kinetic energy is conserved because it returns back to where it started after the collision. The total kinetic energy starts at this level during the collision, it decreases, and then afterwards it ends at the same level. So yes, kinetic energy is conserved, and it is then an elastic collision. So yes, part DI, the collision is elastic because the total energy of the system is conserved. 
Uh, one thing to point out, they do say, is the collision elastic justify your answer? Sometimes they don't put justify your answer, or they don't say explain your reasoning or anything like that, but just ask a yes or no question. When they do that, just answer yes or no and move on. Don't bother justifying or explaining if they don't ask you to. Uh, it's just a yes or no question is probably only worth one point. Part D double I, briefly explain why there is a minimum in the kinetic energy curve at T equals 1.00 seconds. This is conservation of mechanical energy. Before the collision, the total energy of the system is all kinetic energy. During the collision, the spring is compressed, therefore we're gaining uh, elastic potential energy in the system and the kinetic energy is decreasing. Right here at this point, the spring is compressed to its maximum amount and therefore it will have the maximum amount of elastic potential energy. And then the spring expands and the elastic potential energy decreases and the kinetic energy goes back into the system. Therefore, we have conservation mechanical energy. So at 1.00 seconds, the spring is at its maximum compression, therefore the spring will have its maximum amount of elastic potential energy. And therefore, due to conservation of mechanical energy, the kinetic energy of the system will then be at its minimum value. That is my solution to question number one. If you'd like to see my solution to question number two, hopefully there'll be something to press right here-ish. I'll see you there.